Welcome back people. Today I am starting a small mini series on how to do a rosette style earring. Many of you guys have been asking for this and this is going to be a run through of what I do what I use for material. So let's get started with something simple such as a template. The template I do have it on my Etsy account which I'll link it below. Circle Graph Designs is a two and a half inch template which is here, it comes in a graph design. I did cut it a bit smaller because I don't need the full graph size. So I'm using one circle in for this design. Uh, the material that I'll be putting on is called Pellin, P-E-L-L-N. I'll leave the spelling below to as well. And a link to find this as well. I do have an Amazon storefront that will have most of these materials on it. If not, places where you can get it like Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, just look up Pellin 70, I use 70, not 71. 71 does have an adhesive side to one side. 72 does have both sides adhesive, so yeah, apply a little heat and it does get tacky and stuff sticks to it. Which a lot of people use it to, they put glue on here and they tag it to this. I don't use glue because I use a smaller neat beads, which I'll get into that now. Which are uh, 13s. Which I'll bring this up closer without spilling my beads. Tried not to. Obviously, I do. But size 13 uh, Charlotte cut seed beads. You can hear that I dropped some. So here's Charlotte. And this one's a blue iris. I'm not using this bead, but I'm using it as a color. So Charlotte cut doesn't mean that there is a facet cut into the bead. These are glass beads. And I do have a, another video that does explain where I get these beads and where you can get them as well. But that's one of the bead size I, I use. And then for needles, I use size 11. So I guess here, John James 11, John James 13, because I am using size 13. You need size 13 beads, needles, sorry. I do have them along, extra long. But John James is not the only brand. There's also, ooh, let me get these other ones out real fast. Um, other beadings. Uh, needles such as Lance and uh, Pony beads or Pony needles. The price difference is quite a bit. So with John James, they're only about ten dollars for a pack of twenty-five. For a pack of Lance, for me it's four fifty, and Pony, which is smaller, is um, two fifty. So these are on the smaller sprint. These and it goes up. These are more flexible. They do bend easy. Um, John James is a little more stiff, but it is brittle. It does break pretty easy. On the top end of the needle scale is a needle called Tulip. Tulip brand needles. They normally sell them in like two pack needles, which I'll show you. It comes in this little vial. If you look closely, there's two needles in there. And if you look here, it says 13 and it says Tulip. This is $20 for two needles, $10 needle. It's quite expensive. Yeah. Do I use them? Rarely because they're that expensive. I tend to lose needles quite often, but I don't really buy in packs of 25. And I buy, if I here, I keep what? There's about 100, needle, 100 needles here. I normally keep about 100 to 200 needles with me because I do use them quite often. I mean, I do get bent and tossed into my pile of used needles. Um, since I'm using those, I'm using Nymo B thread for my beading. I mean, this is kind of on the bigger end for the 13. I'm going to use a smaller needle. But if you're using uh, 11s, you want to use a either B or D um, thread. If you're using something smaller, you want to use O or double O for 15s, 13s, 15s. But I'm kind of odd like that. But anywho, let's get to this. I don't use, like I said, I don't use glue to tack this down. And if you're using Pellin or your Ultra Fabric Stabilizer or Stephen Fault, what have you, even use beat on straight on the buckskin but my pellet is not always perfect as you can see it's bent and all this and I'll try to use that best fleece so I'll go through here and kind of trim it to size roughly trim it not exactly to size try and get rid of the jagged edges just to get the piece on so I do have my needle pre threaded so I'll show you how I tack it down so I just go back from back, just fill it whichever side feels nice to me. And I'll go through, I'll tack it. 
So since I'm using this section here, that outer darker line, I'll be inside that. And I'll use tacks that are roughly a quarter inch to half inch long. You can use wax if you prefer. So I don't really use it. Unless the piece I'm beating into is quite rough and quite harsh on the needle. Then I'll use it then. But this isn't too harsh, this isn't too bad, so you can see it going through quite easy. And I'm using bigger tacks, so you can see the tack here is quite big. And back here, quite big as well. So it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be exact. This is long as it holds the paper down and the paper's flat. Where it's not has a so as long as there's not a fold or a bend in it, as long as it's flat, it works. So here I'm going through and just tacking here and there. I'm tacking with my first needle because I'll be using the two needle method here. So my first needle will actually be on top, which is a size 12 or 13 needle. Which I'll be having, which I'll have my beads on. So here you can see the cross section here. I do like to bead in those cross sections when it's stripping down side to side. Depending on the design, then I like to start and end in that section. So here I'll start with that line here, go up to here, and just start on one side of it. So you see, I'm starting on this side. So then when I go around, it meets up in that butt section, and I go over that way and can come back. Well, I'll show you once I get there. So I'll go through, get my needle ready. And this is my top needle, which is my thinner needle. My size 12 or 13 on top. Reason I do that because it will hold my beads. So these are my 13s and I can run my needle through it easily. And it's not going to do a lot of work. So this needle will be straight most of the time and not really be bent. Normally I add about two to three inches of beads just because I do this quite often. If you're just starting, you don't have to do this much. You can start out with as little or as much as you want. Whatever you feel comfortable with. So you see, top needle, that's all it does. It just holds the beads, nothing else. Your secondary needle, which is here. I'm using the bigger needle, the 11. It doesn't have to be the same size needle all the time. You can use 11, you can use a 10, whatever you feel that's more robust for your beadwork. Because it is going to be used, you're going to use it quite often and to be angling, pushing, and shoving, and doing this and that. You want to have something that's a little more sturdy and comfortable for your hand. If you're used to a long, use a long. If you're used to a short, use a short needle. But I start by tacking on the first needle, or the first bead, I should say. As you can see, I'm starting right here. I'm starting on the inside of the design, working my way out towards the line, and tacking on the line of the design. So my thread, when it tightens, it tightens from the inside out. So when I pull it tight, it pulls the bead up towards the line. So I'll go my next section, I'll do two beads after that. Going just below it and then going on the line and tacking. So you can see there. And I'll pull it. Make sure it sits right in the right section where I want to need the thread at and pull it. So I'm not beading in the bead, as you can see here. I'm actually below the beads and pushing through. And then when I'm going to the top, I'll bring it down, make sure it's lined up where I need it. Actually, I'll line up where it's needed here. And I'll pull it down and go through. So you see, there's nothing actually going through the beads itself. I'm just going just below and above it and catching that needle or that thread that's going through the bead. And that's what I'm tacking down. So as I'm pulling, you can see it's off the line. And I pull it tight, it moves up towards the line. So I'll do that all the way around, doing every two beads to tack down. Here I'm kind of catching the edge a bit 
just because the edge is kind of jagged and not smooth so if you do have a round piece you can go at this point and make the piece round which will actually reduce the chance in, chances of your thread catching these jagged edges so, just like that now I have a round piece and your thread won't really get caught, it'll just slide her off the edge. Sometimes it'll get caught depending on the loop and how fast you're going. But at this point, if you're just starting to noodle, just go slow. You don't have to go fast. Get used to the motion, get used to your hand eye coordination. Because sometimes, like here, I missed. I got the three bead to set two so I can pull up on it and reset the bead. Or reset the needle, kind of push it in place and get it. So I get every two beads. So I'll go through this process a few times just to show you guys how it is going at my regular pace. Kind of. <laughs> I say my regular pace, but this is slow down for you guys to see I do get close to my hand quite a bit but that's kind of the hazard of doing needle to needle or just kind of embroidery work I don't know the technical term but so here I'll show you if I kit three needles or three beads Let's say you're trying to do it fast and come one, do three beads. It can be done, but just be aware that when you do do all that, sometimes a bead can be not straight. <laughs> I can't not really uh, leave three. I normally go back and get the one. So here you can see I did three and I went back and I got that one. So if you do that and you happen to go one extra, just go back and get one extra of the three. The reason why I do three is, let me show you here. So let's say you do three and you tack, tack it down. So the ends here will actually tack down and push. If you have it dull too tight, it'll actually bunch together and it'll push the bead up. So then you get kind of some bumpiness to it. And if you have it too loose, you'll have this one that's kind of just free floating and bouncing around. So that's why I do two because if you do tack it down here and it pulls down, if you're too close, it's going to fight each other but not really push on each other. But with three, if you have it too close, I said it'll bunch and push. If it's too loose, they'll do that. I want it to be floating around. So For me, two is a standard of what I do, so it has that nice flat feel. So you see, I'm getting that nice curve of the circle. So I just go around, going from inside out. This is all, I'm going to do this on the parts that curve, so if you're S'ing, or it does make a weird shape, you do want to make sure you're going in the correct orientation. If you're going straight, it doesn't really matter. Because if you're going straight and your beads kind of go down, you can push your beads up. Or if it's too high, you can go from the top down and pull your beads down. So There's some instances where you just kind of have to guess at which way you want to roll your beads. And plus, you're just going around. You're not um, really holding this part tight in this hand you're just kind of just guiding it just holding it here and pinching it together it's not really pushing tight where the beads are doing that it's just enough for it to loose so if you check my hand the beads are actually pretty loose it, I'm just guiding it with my thumb here so I can go up and down with the bead so here I'm not here at that I'm actually rolling the bead up pushing the beads up sliding it towards that line and that's where I'm tacking. 
So here you can see it's running just straight with the with my hand. And once I tack it down, I readjust and I can set the beads where I want it and tack it. So I'm constantly adjusting as I move along. So I'm not just holding the beads at a circle like <laughs> like so. I'm not trying to do that and beat along because you'll get really floppy. So leaving a few beads exposed just for me to manipulate the bead and get them to where I want them to sit. So in that matter of a few moments, I did get a few done. So let me just go quiet and you guys can see how I bead. I do have really good hand-eye coordination when I do this, so reason why my moves are really not wasted on poking once or twice through. And I have really good faith in my myself to not poke myself. So I am missing myself by quite a bit there, but at times I'm really close like that so within a few millimeters and within the back so see that i do get quite close but i've been doing this long enough so i know where to keep my hands and where to push my needle through without getting myself but you know as you can see here, I've come to the end of my run of beads, and I'm tacking the last two down. So with this, you can add more beads to the second or your first top thread to hold all your beads, and you can add as much as you want to again. Like I said, an inch, two, three inches, six inches, whatever your preference is. If it's a solid color, you can just Keep going, keep going, keep adding. Only just do a small section and go around. So that's how I add more beads. So once you get around here, you need to do a section here to butt it up. I'll show you guys how to do that. With this section. Aha. Movie magic. <laughs> so I went around, I did the whole section, and now we're going to butt it together. The reason why I go from the outside instead of working my inside out is because it's really hard to keep the two circles the same. Especially working from the inside out. The other pieces will be bigger or small, smaller. It's never going to be the exact same. If you're really good, then yeah, it's going to be exact. But it's going to be kind of some spacing in between where it's kind of like, mm, can I fill it then? Use a marker, kind of fill it. But for me, going from the outside, I can keep my design both the same size, same shape, without having to worry about is the exact one in. I know it's perfect. It took me a while to realize that, but anyways. So once you get to the end and you got your circle going, that save extra beads and you want to get done. So you just want to go and take off the few extra beads here so it lines up like so. So with two needle, you can do this. With a single needle, you really can't because you just got to tack it down and figure out how much you have and break off needles. With this, you don't have to. So from here, I could go like that. So then it's lined up with the close amount of beads in every dollar fit. Then I'll just pass through one or two or two or three beads from the start. Like so. 
So when it butts up together, it's aligned a lot better. So there's a little bump in it, but that's fine. So with this, you don't want to pull this tight because it does have that curve in it and you see it's kind of straight. You just want to have it there just to keep it in place. And then you want to keep going with from the inside out and going towards the line. Doing every two beads like so. And once you get to the point where the beads do butt together, where one meets the other one, if you can see it there, you can see this one's higher and that one's lower. So you want to beat that one there. That last bead to the first bead. Just so then you don't have that offset piece. One higher, one lower. So once you beat those two in that section, and then it's flat. Oh, see my camera can focus, it's flat. And then you won't notice where the start or the end is. Then with this, you just wanna kind of go at a 45 degree angle, like so and go in. Because you wanna go slightly underneath the beads. So when you tighten it, you're not having to pull down one way or you're not pulling up one way direction. Yeah, like that, just make sure it's tight, go around, feel it, make sure it's flat, and you have a perfectly round circle. I mean, this is what I use for this method for the hummingbird pieces, for these sections here, these long curves, even in here, except for that little bit in that side. The fill sections this year, I'll use two single, single. So, once you get more advanced, then you can use them to make curves and intricate designs, like so. But anyways, that concludes this portion of it. And I'll go through later on and get more into designing and how I use the mortograph for my designing. Such as getting more, I guess, color and color sections. Such as this. Same thing, circle graph. I did do a white border on the outside. But I did add the mongol beagle beads in there as well to make my sections here and keep my pieces similar on both sides with the color and all that. So I get more into that with this piece. So I'm not making this exact one because this is kind of crazy. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that was a little more informative for you guys. So stay tuned for the next video and thank you.